Okay, there we are. We have Paul Lindstrom on the line. Paul, how are you today? Oh, very good, thank you. Very good, very good. Thank you for taking the time to uh, dial in with us here. No problem. From the English countryside, correct? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Beautiful East Sussex. Excellent, excellent. Now, Paul, uh, we've known Paul for years. I think many of you know Paul, uh, but we'll let Paul introduce himself. But Paul, just so people know, is going to talk about in a moment here his experiences with beta testing ID Marks, the new application out from Marks where to preview, export, and convert in design files. Uh, yeah. Before we, yeah, before we jump into that, Paul, maybe you could tell the the, the, the watchers about yourself. Yeah, um, I started out to be a part-time print owner. I was uh, doing the prepress department, manage, uh, managing files for all kind of clients, publishers, and then I was asked to do uh, freelance work as a journalist, testing software and hardware. So that was my entry into be become more full-time journalist. And um, on top of that, I then later on was asked to teach at the university in Copenhagen and Malmo. So teaching uh, production managers uh, expected to go out in uh, printing and publishing companies. So um, combining teaching, consulting, training with um, Try, trying out all the new and later software and hardware, and, and that's been quite good fun over the years. And uh, pre-flight software from Arcsware was one of the software I, I had the students try out and use as an example of uh, all-round pre-flight software that could not only open PDF files, but actually open nat native files, Quark Express or InDesign. So I known uh, Markware products from from early on, and yeah. always uh, uh, brought them to the students to try out, and and uh, was really intrigued with um, the new software. Uh, so of course jumped on the chance to t test it in a in an alpha or beta version. Right, right. And uh, I noticed I don't have you know I don't know if I'll put this in the video, but I noticed you have a cool hobby of, of uh, beekeeping. Is that is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Uh, I I was actually interested in getting bees when I retired, but our neighbor came and asked me, Paul, shouldn't we get bees? And I said to him, Yeah, I. We'll do that, but when I retire, oh no, let's do it together, and and it should be cool. So um, persuaded to start earlier than I expected, we now keep some colonies, and um, it's amazing creatures, and and many people sympathise with trying to do what you can to help the bees survive because they're under stress, they're under right. pressure from modern farming, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, pesticides. Yeah. pesticides. So yeah. we have. Uh, Three colonies, which is a small apiary, but uh, that's enough to get some honey and watch them at work. It's really uh, uh, relaxing to to sit by the bees and see what they're doing. Awesome! Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I, I really find it interesting as well. But we're not here for the bees right now. But that is very interesting. Um, yeah. Maybe you can tell us, Paul, more about uh, your first experiences with ID Marks. How, how, you know what you thought of it. Yeah, <clears throat> I know. Um, Marks were had have solutions from before to convert between Quark Express to InDesign and vice versa. <clears throat> but um, when I heard about the new, uh, brand new software, of course I wanted to see how that works. And uh, it was a very straightforward, easy user interface. You, you open a file and it comes up. And um, the InDesign file, in my case, because um, I don't use Quark much anymore. Um, open up nicely and you have a nice preview as if you were in InDesign. And you also have, which I noted was a, a little extra bonus, you get the um, pre-flight summary, which is, yeah. is a nice feature, I think. So uh, then you can decide to export to where you want to file and um, you can either export with a backward compatibility to older version of InDesign which could be useful for a lot of publishers with legacy data um, but I also noted you have an export route to the uh, fairly new software from Affinity the publisher, Affinity publisher yeah. and I suspect um, quite a lot of designers is tempted to check out an alternative to InDesign uh, yeah. Not least those who might be not so happy with um, Adobe uh, s subscription model. I mean, 
has been a lot of controversy over the years whether that is um, uh, reasonable or reasonable priced. Uh, I, I can't say. It's it's a nice suite of software, but uh, yeah, you are locked in to a subscription model. Right. But anyway, for anyone who wants to look at alternatives, the um, IDA marks uh, is a bridge to convert old legacy documents into uh, other desktop publication, uh, desktop uh, publishing software. So right. uh, quite straightforward and look very handy to me. Right, right. Yeah, that's, uh, so the preview and the file info will, will go hand in hand where people can first get a visual idea what the file is with a small little mini pre-flighter file info so they can yeah. decide what they want to do next, you know, or maybe a small yeah, file. I think yeah. If there are some uh, some signaling, some errors, of course, people might have or want to buy the um, the big full version of, of the pre-flight software to really go into the details. But that's right. this is ju uh, just a hint that uh, you might need to check these files before you do more with it. Yeah, right. And was there any? Did you try? Did you? use any of the open-in features? Did you do any of the opening in InDesign or Acrobat or anything like that? Yeah, yeah I did. And uh, it seemed quite uh, more or less seamless integration yep. immediately when you export. If you have the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud software on your computer, it opens up immediately so you can check if it's been uh, converted in the way you, you're happy with. So, and right. the same in Acrobat, you, you immediately get it open. If, I, if you export the uh, PDF, you get it immediately open in Acrobat uh, DC. You can see many, many um, type of users that would appreciate this kind of conversion software. Another thing is potentially for the people, the um you know, with uh, flaky files that are, you know, mm. doing strange things, you just quickly open it in ID Marks, export to IDML, and you've sort of cleaned your file in most cases, so you can then open it in InDesign more safely. That's another, yeah. uh, you know... Uh, the IDML format seemed to be um, uh, accepted by, by quite a lot of uh, web authoring tools, so that's that's one route yeah. to, to do it. Um, that seemed to be quite stable format uh, yeah. uh, in the sign markup language uh, file right. format. Right. Exactly. <coughs> um, okay, so on that, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. But would would you recommend ID marks to people potentially wanting to buy it? Yeah, I think um, hopefully people who need to do those kind of conversions will find their way to the software because it's a must-have if you sit in a production uh, stream and there are files you can't open for different reason then of course if you can't open a file you, you try to find a conversion tool and uh, this is one for for in the sign file and you have other um, conversion tools to convert Quark Express files, etc. So right. so it's it's really handy and nifty tools to have at hand for, let's say, a pre-press production manager or uh, technical support in a bigger publishing house uh, or a big PR company with, with uh, one or two people who are really uh, good at uh, fixing files from colleagues or, or customer or clients. So those type of... Mm, troubleshooters and problem solvers this is a tool they, they should have and, and know of and invest in because it's reasonably priced and do a, a, a really unique work it's it it's when you need it it's what you need and then you have to have it right good very good point yeah this is a perfect uh, potential user indeed uh, another point uh, Paul is the Cork Express users can benefit from this because of the IDML and feed IDML import feature in the newer Quark 2019. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now they can just uh, open it right up through ID Marks even directly. Uh, so it's a very handy tool for Quark Express users who are working in an InDesign mixed workflow. Exactly. It, it, it takes care of many conversion scenarios. So really, really useful and handy as I see it. Right. Cool. Now, what I want to do is see if I can share my screen with you. Let's see if I don't know how you do that. Actually, uh, call layout. <laughs> For the folks, real quick here, your your file in ID Marks because it was it's mm. a very it's a nice file. It's a real life scenario file. It's um, what is the file actually? Maybe you can tell people what that file is. 
Yeah, it's um, it's a guide to how to use ISO standards in print production workflows. So several years ago, we um, started to do certification both in Sweden and England, in the UK, mm-hmm. teach teaching printers how to. First of all, to teach uh, printers and publishers that there are many ISO standards that uh, tie into a quality managed print workflow. ISO 12607-2 is amongst the most well-known and the proofing standard, but there are other prepare standards, uh, how to calibrate the monitor, etc. And we tie that up to a whole package. Which ISO standards should you use, for example, to um, when you buy viewing booths, the ISO standard 3664, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And we wrote this um, guide, the manual, to check the whole workflow from monitor calibration, uh, image retouch, um, plate making, CTP, calibrating presses, and finally printing with uh, what stand ISO standard you should uh, know about and apply. And we c- collected that to a set of guides that we call standardized print production, the digital dots guides to standardized print production, SPP. And that was one of the documents I just by chance was curious to see would ID marks open that and uh, with some hiccups in the beginning and some fixes from your excellent programmers we uh, got it to work oh, but I mean I I, trust, I tried that in your alpha uh, software so right, I wasn't right. surprised if I it happens quite often with me when I test software and hardware I seem to manage to um, <laughs> Uh, stumble on some bugs and report them back to the software. And uh, best case, it is welcomed as a opportunity to fix something you didn't know needed to be fixing. And um, I was impressed that um, your you your people um, very quickly uh, took on the challenge, and also within a day or two saw what was needed and and fixed it. So uh, right. that was good. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's why we we need people like you, without a doubt, with real life, you know, uh, production files like this. And just, you know, I I think people just saw what I did when you were describing the file. It's real easy to use ID marks. You just take your file and drop it on either the icon down below in your dock or, you know, up here in the interface. And in a matter of, you know, literal seconds, you get a complete preview of this, uh, you know, 24 page, 13 spreads document. And, uh, Mm. You can zoom in to any part and get you know crisp details of the file, and um, uh, you saw. Well, I think I did too much here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you saw how you could take any thumbnail of a of a page and drag and drop it out to the side. Oops. So you can take any thumbnail of a page and drag and drop it onto your desktop, and get an instant. Um, PDF of that file. So this would be a great case mm. where you can take this file and use it in social media or uh, in prepress, send back to the customer and say, hey, this page has yeah, a problem. Or in proof, proof, proof cycles, etc. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that overly anxious that there are minor conversion issues because let's, let's face it, if you do a conversion from one application to another the reason why you do this is probably because you want to update the document so you have a legacy document and you need to do some corrections and i would accept minor tweaks and and touch up uh, because in the end I, i need to do some other edits to the document probably in the in the new software, be it uh, right. uh, Quark or, or uh, what, Affinity Publisher. Affinity, There's yeah. probably other things you want to do with the document, and you are, you're just grateful you can bring most of it over to this new right. platform right. and then uh, continue from there. So, And just to show it's, folks, yeah, I don't have Affinity Publisher on this machine, on my other uh, machine I do, but... You can just click now any one of these. Well, you can export to multiple formats, including uh, PDF, which is quite handy, the entire document, which is uh, nice. Of course, IDML and many image formats. But also, you can just click like here, Quark, and it will now actually fire up Quark Express. 
and um, open the document right up in Quark Express for us, which is really cool. And there, Quark is launching now for me. And um, we'll see what happens here. I didn't test this before, so you know, you never know. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah, of course, some font. I don't have all the fonts, but in any event, uh, there it is in Quark Express. All right, Paul. Well, uh, any final thoughts before we go here? No, I let, let's hope uh, people find their way to this really useful handy tool um, because it is really a godsend for when you sit and have legacy files that you don't know what to do with and need to, instead of remake the whole design which takes days and weeks, within minutes you have it and that should be really useful for lots of, lots of people. Excellent. So good luck with that. Yeah, well thank done. you. And thank you for the all the testing, and uh, we look forward to any more feedback you might have. And uh, thank you very yeah, much for very, the time. Very good. Thank you, David. Hey, See thank you, you, Paul. Have a good Bye. day.